Welcome, this is Jennifer. I'm so glad you're here. Well, today is all about shaker cards. I have several examples for you, each showing a variation of a shaker card technique. The best part about shaker cards is you can use them with different products. So I have several different looks for you today. I know not everyone is into shaker cards, so keep in mind that many of these designs you can do as window cards or just as regular cards too. Let's get started with this example here. I think it's best to look at the completed card. This is a version of an eclipse technique, which I did in my last video, but I turned it into a shaker card. So you have a continuous background around and inside of the shaker. This is easy to do and can be done with any background technique. I decided to do some stamping and stenciling for my particular background. I have my Misty stamping tool, but you can use an acrylic block if you prefer. And inside I have a Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat just to hold my cardstock in place as we stamp. Now you could definitely just use a little temporary tape there to hold it in place if you prefer. On top, I'm lining up this new background from Pink Fresh Studio and there are coordinating stencils, which you'll see in a moment. I am using my anti-static powder tool on my cardstock because I plan to heat emboss. I'm inking this up with Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. And after stamping it, I will sprinkle on silver embossing powder. I'm gonna do a few variations of this background, but for the first one, I decided to do the stamping with silver embossing. This background you could leave as is, but I'm using the coordinating stencils that are available to add color, and it gives a really cool result. I'm using that same stick and stamp mat from uh, Brutus Monroe to hold my cardstock in place and to hold my stencil on top. This is really handy, but you could definitely use temporary tape. I'll show that option in a moment. Brutus Monroe now also has this blending buddy, which is that rectangle piece I put on top. So you can place that ar around your inked area and you don't have to worry about getting ink on the sticky portion. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're just applying ink over the stencil. The stencils easily line up with the lines in this, on the stamping that we did, allowing you to create a really colorful plaid. After I've inked up the first stencil, I'm wiping it clean. Then I'll remove my blending buddy, remove the stencil, and you can see the result. Now what's cool about these stencils is you ink it one way, then you flip it and ink it on the other side. So there are three stencils, but six ways to use them, allowing you to put lots of color on your background. I'm only using three colors of ink today, but you definitely could change it up if you wanted to. So now I'm putting that stencil in place, putting the blending buddy back on top, and applying the same color. You could go with any inks you want here. I'm using Pink Fresh Studio inks and I'm including the color names on the screen for you. So this looks beautiful as is with the white area. You could definitely leave it, but I wanted to show you all three stencils so you can get a colorful background. So this is stencil number two. I will set it up on my sticky mat, ink over it with the teal color, then we'll clean that, flip it over and ink it again before moving on to the third stencil. While I'm doing this, I did want to mention in my videos, I show several different ways to kind of hold your stencils in place as you do your inking. Please know you don't need to have all the different options. Sometimes I use a waffle flower um, st uh, stencil mat. Sometimes I use a sticky mat like I'm doing here. Sometimes I just tape it to my work surface. I change up what I do just to show you different options that are available. Also, some stencils work better in different situations or they're easier to line up, I guess. Just find what works for you. Don't feel that you have to do all the different ways. You don't need to try all the different tools. Just watch in the videos and if something intrigues you, you may wanna try it. But otherwise, if you have a system that works for you, do what works for you. So here is the third stencil. I inked it once with Fresh Pear, one of my favorite greens, flipped it over and I'm inking it up again. And what results is a beautiful plaid background. I used it with the stamp, remember we did that heat embossing, but you can use the stencils without the stamp or the stamp without the stencils too. You could also do maybe like a watercolor over this heat embossing instead, a lot of options. Now here is another way you can line up these stencils with your panel. Here I just have tape on the edges and I just fold the tape back to tape the paper to the stencil and then you can ink on it. This is just another way to apply ink over the background. Again, you just wanna play around and figure out what works best for you. 
This time, on this example, I did white heat embossing before adding the color with the stencils. This is definitely my favorite way to use this uh, combination of products. That white heat embossing gives these white fine lines between the color when you're done, and it is just gorgeous. I'm gonna skip all of the inking here in the video to save some time. I did add candy violet and sparkling rose using the other two stencils and look at this final result with those fine white heat embossed lines. Absolutely beautiful. I did create another background with this stamp and stencil set and I'll show you that in a bit. But first, let's turn this into a shaker card with a fun kind of eclipse look. I'll talk about that in a moment. This one's really easy to do and great for backgrounds that you really want to be the focal point. So I trimmed this background to be about five and a quarter by four inches. And I have a square die to cut a window right at the center. You can use absolutely any shape that you want here. I thought the square lined up nicely with the plaid. Now I also have four pieces of cardstock cut to be the same size. That will be the walls of our shaker window. I'm lining it up behind our inked piece popping the die right in place and taping them together. These are not glued together, just taped together. After running it through my die cut machine, I can now pop out the white square. So now these two pieces are the same size and have the square cut in the same place. So they'll easily line up when we're ready to assemble. Now I will do the same thing with these other pieces of white cardstock. So I have four pieces of cardstock with that square cut in the same place. You could use foam tape to form the walls of your shaker card instead of doing this, but I find this gives better results and I'll talk more about that later and show a foam tape version later in this video too. Now we can glue these four layers together. I'm using liquid adhesive from Gina K Designs because that way when I put them together, I can wiggle them until they're perfectly lined up. Really the most important thing is so that that square is lined up nicely. So I just kind of put my fingers inside of the square to just press them all together. After I have these four glued together, these will be the walls of our shaker card and they'll hold up very nicely in the mail and stay nice and strong. Next, I need to create the back of my shaker card. I'm using that inked square that we die cut out and we're gonna line it back up with the window in a moment. I'm gluing this onto a piece of scrap paper that's a little bit bigger, just so I have the area to glue it to the back of our die cut opening. You'll see in a moment. So I'm putting adhesive around this, doesn't matter what size this piece is, and this will get glued to the back of our die cut walls, lining up the opening with that die cut square in the center. Now let's take that inked up background with the hole in the center and glue some acetate behind it. Any kind of clear packaging would work. I'll link below to Simon Says Stamp Acetate if you don't have any, but really look at your trash. There is so much clear packaging waste that would work here. It could even be thin packaging from a stamp set. Anything would work. So I glued that to the back of that inked window and I put something heavy on it to dry. While that dries, I'm filling my shaker window with whatever you want. I really like to use these little confetti circles from Trinity Stamps because they catch the light so nicely and they're super thin so they move around. I also like to put in little gems, usually clear ones, so that I can have something with a bit of dimension. And I'll talk more about having something with dimension in there too. So I put a variety of things in there. This time I'm using all clear elements so you can see the pattern behind it. Now we can glue our inked piece right on top, lining up the window, and look at that cool effect. You have a continuous background, but in the center you have that shaker window. It's kind of like the eclipse technique that I showed you in the last video, but this time in reverse and for a shaker card. All right, now I glued that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, and all we need is a sentiment. I'm using an old favorite of mine that I use a lot, the Pink Fresh Studio Just a Hello stamp set and coordinating die. This allows you to stamp all of these sentiments at once and then die cut them all out at once. Because I use this so much, I usually create extras when I'm doing so, as you see me do here. That way I have sentiments ready to go when I need them. I stamped them with a black pigment ink and now I'm adding clear embossing powder and heat setting it so it'll have a nice raised shine to it. At this point, I felt like I wanted a frame around the shaker window just to make it stand out a bit more. The easiest way to do this with a square die or rectangle is to die cut the square that you use to create the window. 
and I'm die cutting it right in the corner of a piece of white cardstock. So it's kind of close, but there's a little white trim around that corner. After I run that through my die cut machine, I can cut the other two sides off to be a similar width. And that way you end up with a nice white frame that you can glue around your window on your shaker card. I really wasn't sure if I was going to add this frame, but I decided to in the end because it created that focal point that kind of zeroes you in on that small sentiment that'll be glued right at the center of our shaker window. So there's the completed card. It's actually pretty clean and simple design. You could do this with any background. Say you create a background that has alcohol ink or watercolor and you really just want to show off all of the background. This is a fun way to kind of step it up and turn it into a shaker card. You can see how the little sequins move in there. I used clear options so it didn't distract from the colorful background, but you could put anything in there that you want. Here's another card I made that's similar, but this time I didn't put a frame around the shaker window. Instead of a square, I used a heart, and you can still see the shaker window without the frame. It makes it a little more subtle. The background on this was with the same stencil and stamp. The stamp I did with dark pink, and then I inked over it with pink, yellow, and coral inks. I also used a sentiment from that same Just a Hello set that I showed you before. So this is just a variation and another example of how you can use a background, but add something to it by creating an Eclipse Shaker window. All right, let's move on to our next example. Now here's the completed card so you know where we're headed, but this one is a shaker wreath card. So inside of our wreath, we have a shaker window, which is just a fun way to kind of step up a wreath card. You can see I also used the inked background that I created at the beginning of this video. Now for the leaves, I use this brilliant new set from Pink Fresh Studio called Fall Foliage. There are coordinating um, dyes and these layering stencils, which allow you to create a bunch of inked leaves very quickly. And these leaves can be really multicolored because you can blend different colors over the same opening, so there's a lot you can do with it. This card, I'm doing kind of a summery look, but then I will also show you one where I do a fall look using the same leaf stencils and dies. This time I'm putting my cardstock and my stencils into my Misty stamping tool just to hold them in place. With layering stencils, if you line up the same corner every time, your images will line up. So I'm using the corner of my Misty to do so. Again, there are many ways to line up stencils. This is just another option. So I put my cardstock and my first stencil in the corner of my stamping tool, and now I'm applying a light amount of ink here. You could do a variety of colors over these openings. So here I thought I'd come in with a brighter green and put it over some of the leaves. This is one of the best ways to get more from your stencils. Instead of putting one color over the whole stencil, try multiple colors. So I'll continue to go through the layering stencils here. And really I'm just mixing up different greens, different shades of greens from the Pink Fresh Studio line. They have beautiful, beautiful greens. And then I do throw in a little bit of soft aqua to pull out some blues too. Another thing I do recommend if you do a lot of stenciling is to have a large blending brush and also a smaller detail brush like the one I'm using here. That allows you to get into some of the smaller places with a heavier amount of ink. But keep in mind, you can make this work with just one size of blending brush or any type of inking tool. You could use the Tim Holtz ink blending tools. You could use a typical size blending brush. Make what you have work for you. But if you do a lot and are looking for ways to kind of step it up, a variety of brush sizes is usually helpful. Okay, so I have added different colors of greens here. You can see I popped some blue in there too. And after I did all of the stencils, you end up with these beautiful, beautiful leaves. I could have done more variety in the color, but I wanted to stick in that green color family. One of the things I really like about this particular layering stencil set is look at, you could use it as a background as is, just trim it down, or you can use the coordinating die that's available that cuts all of these out at once, and then you have those individual die cuts. Before we turn these into a wreath, I wanted to show you some others I created with fall colors. I did a variety of red, oranges, and greens, and browns over this using the layering stencils. However, I didn't realize I used the layering stencils upside down, so the coordinating die doesn't line up with them. 
That's okay. Here's a trick you can do if you ever do this by accident. You just flip it over, hold the die up against it, and point it up towards the light, and you'll actually be able to see through to your inking on the other side, allowing you to line up the die and run it through your die cut machine. This actually is a good thing because it allows you to use your stencils forward and backwards, so you'll be able to create mirror images, which is just more options for your card making. So this was a mistake that worked out well in the end, and I will use these leaves on a shaker card later on in this video. But let's go back to the spring colored leaves and create a wreath card. This is the background that we made earlier in this video. I cut it to four by five and a quarter inches, and I'm die cutting a circle from the top center. You can do any shape you want here, but this is a great start for a wreath. I also have four pieces of white cardstock cut to the same size. Actually, you can cut it a little smaller if you want to. Here's another way to get the circle in the same place. You can hold your white piece behind it, pop that main circle into the front window, hold that die cut there, and take your circle die and pop it right around. Remove that inside circle die cut, and then run it through your die cut machine. So this is just another way to make sure you get your window positioning just right for each of these layers. So now that I have this one done, I can move on to the next piece and do so for all of those white cardstock pieces, which will form the walls of our shaker card. This is an excellent opportunity to use inexpensive cardstock or scrap cardstock for these white layers because no one will see them. All right, so I have all of those die cut. I'll use my liquid adhesive to glue all of those layers together. Now we can set that aside while it dries and start adding our leaves around the circle window here, right on our inked piece. This is really easy to do because you're following that circle. It'll help you to form the wreath just right. Now you could make this a window card. Remember, if you're not into shaker cards, this would be a really fun window card that would let you see to the inside of the card. So I'm just gluing the leaves down, trying to make the width of the wreath pretty even all around. Have some leaves kind of stick in towards the window, some kind of stick out, just for a good variety. Once I'm done, we can add our acetate behind this. There are many ways you can do this. You could use liquid adhesive, as we did before, but this time I decided to use some double-sided tape around the window in case that's an option that you prefer. Really doesn't matter, you just want to make sure that it's behind this window. And you don't need a big piece of acetate. It just needs to be slightly bigger than the window that you've cut. Now we need to take those stacked die cut white pieces that form the walls and add this to the back of our panel here. I used a combination of liquid adhesive and tape. Really doesn't matter, but you do want to kind of seal around that window. That's why I use the liquid adhesive. So now we'll take our white die cut piece and line it up with the window on the back of our wreath panel. Once again, I chose some clear sequins and gems to put in here. The reason I did so is this is a pretty busy card as is, and I felt if I had color in there, it might be too distracting. I did add some really old white flower sequins I had too. Not too much. Again, this is really about adding some sparkle inside of the wreath, but not distracting from it. Now I'm putting adhesive all around that window. Again, liquid adhesive seems to be the best option. And then a piece of scrap paper behind that. This could be colored cardstock if you wanted to. All right, now all we have to do is glue that onto a top folding white note card and then add the sentiment right across the top. This is again from the set I showed you earlier in this video. I use this one a lot. So here you can see the final result. We have our inked background that we made at the beginning of the video. We have our inked leaves forming a wreath for a shaker window. I like how the wreath frames that shaker window but you could definitely just leave it an open window if you prefer. You can see I didn't put much inside of it because I didn't want it to be too distracting, but when you shake it, you can see the sparkle move around inside. Okay, now it's time for another type of shaker card, and I call this a maze shaker card. And I'll explain more as we go, but basically there's an obstruction, something inside of the shaker window that all the sequins have to move around, which is really fun because it keeps all of the sequins from falling to the bottom and allows the sparkle to spread out better. Now this is really easy to do. I'm using the new Pink Fresh Studio Fall Foliage combination here. So there's a stamp set. 
There's a coordinating die, there's coordinating stencils, and coordinating washi tape. The cool thing about this washi tape is all you have to do is stick it to cardstock, then use the coordinating dies to cut it out, and you have images that look like they were hand painted. So I'm actually not using the stamp set or the layering stencils, just the washi and the coordinating dies. They have lots of these available, lots of different themes. I have used a similar one in the past. I'll link to it up here on the top right if you want to check out that video too. I just think it's brilliant to have the washi with the coordinating dies, such a huge time saver, especially for folks like me who have a hard time doing coloring like this. This will be a frame shaker card. So I'm creating frames that will build up the walls for the shaker card. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Folk Edge Rectangle Die Set. It's been out for a while, it's a great one. I'll use it again later in this video. So I cut the rectangle itself with that detail cut on the inside edge. Then it also includes a rectangle that you can cut at the center of that if you want to make it a frame instead of a solid piece. So I'm creating frames for this particular card. I like that you have the option on how to use them though. I die cut four of these white frames and these will form the walls of our shaker card. I've already glued them together so we have that ready to go. I've also die cut four white die cuts that go with that image that I plan to use there. These I will glue together and later will glue the pretty one on top. So I'm just stacking four or five of these white die cuts together with liquid adhesive. I try to get up close to the edge, that way none of my sequins kind of get stuck between the layers, but really you shouldn't have any problems. I really want this card to be a lot of white, so I'm gluing this white stacked frame onto a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. By the way, that rectangle die set has several frame sizes, so you can make a smaller or bigger shaker window. I'll make a bigger one later on. Next, I'm gluing that stacked white die cut to the center of my frame, right where I want that image to be, but not the colored one, just the white one, and we'll give that some time to dry. This time I'm filling my shaker window with some clear flower sequins that I've had forever and I'm also putting in some gold iridescent sequins. Really you can put anything in here. I do like to include something with dimension, not just flat sequins. Flat sequins tend to fall down towards the bottom more, but if you put some things in there that have a little more dimension, they sometimes get squeezed between the acetate and the background of your card, which is a good thing because it keeps them from falling down too much. It's good to have some things up towards the top too. You can see I'm putting these sequins all around the image and I'm putting quite a few in here, even some little clear crystals. This will be pretty distracting, these gold sequins. If you want it to be subtle, stick with clear. All right, now I'm putting some liquid adhesive along the top of that stacked white die cut in the center and along the top of that frame. I will then lay on top of that a piece of acetate that I cut to the same size as that frame and that will seal in our shaker window. Be sure to put something heavy on this while it dries. You don't want any of it to come undone. After it's dried, we can go ahead and finish this off. It's easy from here. We'll glue our image right on top, lining it up with the stacked die cuts below it, and then add one last white frame die cut on top. I thought about doing a gold frame here. That would also work really well. But again, I wanted this to be mostly white with just the color of the sequins and that image in the center. I added a sentiment right on top, again, from that same set that I've been using throughout this video. And that's it for this. Now, the reason I call this a maze shaker card is those sequins have to find their way around that obstruction in the middle, those stacked die cuts in the middle, which keeps them all from falling to the bottom. So that sparkle is more spread out, which really works well. If I had just put that image on top of the acetate without the stacked die cuts inside the window, those sequins would get hidden behind that main image too. This is a really, a really effective technique that works with a variety of images. 
Here is another example. I'm not going to show the process of this one. It's similar, but with more obstructions inside of the frame. So this is a true maze shaker card. Behind all of those leaves, I have stacked leaf die cuts. So the little sequins and stuff really have to work their way around it, really preventing them from all falling to the bottom. So I just made sure I spread those sequins and gems out inside of that shaker window between all of those stacked die cuts. This time I just use iridescent sequins and gems so it wouldn't be too distracting from those leaves that we have scattered on top. And I finished it all off with a gold frame die cut. All right, now it's time for another type of shaker card. And this one is a word or sentiment shaker card. More and more companies are coming out with die cut words that come with the shadow die too. And that's great for creating a subtle shaker window. For this, I used a layering stencil set from Pink Fresh Studio that creates a fall leaf border, but I'm gonna make mine pretty bright and spring looking. I like that they included sentiments on these stencils, so you have that option too. They do have coordinating dies to cut out those words. I'm not using those sentiments, but do know those are included in the stencil. All right, now for doing this inking, very basic. I'm using the corner of my Misty again. That's really helpful when you have layering stencils because each time you put the stencil right into the corner and you know they'll line up. I'm using, once again, a variety of soft blue and greens to create this border. I'm using bigger brushes for the bigger areas and tiny brushes to get additional color into the smaller areas. I'm going through this quickly because it's very easy to do. You just line up each stencil and add ink over it. And the cool thing about this is it positions these leaves and dots and such in such a way that it looks like you took time to create that border yourself, but the stencils did the work. So this is one of those time-saving products. Look at that. I just think that's so much fun. And you could use fall colors for a fall card if you prefer. So I trimmed that down and thought I'd turn this into a shaker card using this hello set. Now, in the past, they had this hello die and shadow die that are sold together. Now they have the hot foil hello available too, which works with that shadow die. Again, just giving you more options for the products. I'm not using the hot foil plate. Instead, I'm just using the original die set. This is the shadow for the word hello, and I'm cutting that from the bottom center of our inked background. This will create our window. So our shaker window this time is in the shape of the word hello. I'm putting liquid adhesive on the back of that panel right around the word hello, and then adding a piece of acetate over it, putting something heavy there while it dries. At this point, I remembered I wanted to stamp a sentiment under that window. But notice I didn't stamp well because that acetate's behind there. I'm trying to fix it here. It doesn't really look perfect in the end, but that's okay. I think it turned out just fine, but I should have stamped the sentiment before putting that acetate back there. I wasn't about to start over at this point. Now this time, instead of building up my shaker walls by doing die cuts, I thought I'd do foam tape. You could definitely build up the walls using the hello die cut like I've shown you many times in this video, but I did want to show you foam tape does work well for all of the options that I have shown here. I tend to avoid foam tape because it yellows and kind of hardens over time. And also if you don't put it really close together like I'm doing here, your card may get creases in it as it gets pressure in the mail. So you know, it's up, totally up to you. You can use whatever you have. I also find it less expensive to use scrap cardstock, but this is an option, especially with this one that has intricate areas. Now I'm using my anti-static powder tool all around the edges of that foam tape to make sure none of my sequins get stuck against it. I did try to put the foam tape as close to the window opening as possible. Inside of here, I'm putting a lot of iridescent sequins. I'm putting in a lot because I want them to always show through the window. Since this shaker window is pretty small in comparison, you really wanna make sure a lot are in there so it's always showing. I can then remove the release paper from all of the foam tape and place a piece of white cardstock right on top of this to close off the shaker window. So now we can shake this and see those little sequins move inside. I'll glue this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. 
And then we just need to add the sentiment on top of the acetate. So this is the hello die itself. For the window, we use the shadow die, which is slightly bigger. This hello, I can cut from black cardstock, put glue on the back of it, and add it right on top of the acetate. So behind this hello die cut, you'll see those little sequins move inside of that shaker window. I did also add some sequins uh, scattered around the front of the card just to add a little more shine. Here's the final result. You can see as you shift the card, those little sequins move around behind the word hello. Now this is a more subtle shaker card, but that sparkle inside of there does catch the light nicely and adds something interesting to the simple card design. So if you have any word dies with shadow dies included, this is a fun option to try. All right, there you have lots of ideas for shaker cards. I hope you'll give one of them a try. It really is a great way to have even more fun with your supplies. If you're interested in what I used, it's linked below in my YouTube description, but please go to my blog. There's a lot of information there, including how to get a free stamp and die set at the time I put this video up. If you are interested in other shaker card videos, I have a couple linked here at the end. Thanks for spending this time with me. See you soon, have a good week.